my name is Rachel Fletcher and I am the coordinator of recruitment for the Fajin School of Architecture and Design. Thank you so much for checking out our virtual visit video. Hopefully we can see you on campus sometime soon and get the actual in-person experience that we would love to show you. But until then, this video is meant to answer some questions that explain a little bit about what you would see on campus uh, if you came for a campus visit, a building tour, um, and just get some questions answered about our majors, the programs that we have, and the student experience as a Faye Jones School student. Like I said, hopefully this answers a lot of your questions, but if it doesn't, please reach out and let me know. So like I said, this is meant to cover the basics of the Faye Jones School experience at the University of Arkansas. We're gonna actually start by talking about who exactly is a Faye Jones student, um, who makes up our student population, both in terms of the majors that we cover, but just the students uh, we have within our design programs as well. So I'm actually gonna be starting with the video. Um, I like to bring in a couple of other voices that's just not me talking the whole time. Um, hopefully this will keep it a little bit more interesting. So we're gonna start with this video and then I'll jump into more specifics after that. We are a community of welcome. We are a diverse community of future architects, landscape architects, interior designers, urban planners, and community leaders. As a school, we thrive on diversity and we thrive on inclusion. And certainly, design itself, in its ambitions and in its outcomes, thrives on diversity and inclusion. And we welcome students from all across the state, from all of its regions, we welcome all of you, in all your diversity, in all your strength, in all that you bring to our school, to this community. Welcome. Welcome to Studio Culture. Welcome to the transformative world of design. Welcome to thinking through design. Welcome to a community of designers. Welcome to problem solving. Welcome to having a voice through design. Welcome to the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Our students fall into three different discipline areas. We have architecture, landscape architecture, and interior design. We're very specifically focused on design education in one of these three areas for our students. Um, so for our architecture majors, you can choose to do either a Bachelor of Architecture or a Bachelor of Science in Architectural Studies. We'll talk about the difference between those two in just a second. Um, for landscape architecture, you can do the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture or the Bachelor of Science in Landscape Architectural Studies, basically same setup as the architecture programs. And then we have one option for interior design, the Bachelor of Interior Design. So in talking about the differences between our majors, um, really what it breaks down to are the professional programs versus the studies programs. So our two different major types fall into the areas of professional programs or our professional degrees and our studies programs. So as you can see here, the Bachelor of Architecture, the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, and Bachelor of Interior Design are our professional programs, where architectural studies and landscape architectural studies, as you can probably tell, fall into the studies program. The professional programs, uh, the main thing that you're gonna wanna know about these is that they prepare you for licensure in the field of architecture, landscape architecture, or interior design. Our professional programs are set up to lead students towards licensure in that area, whichever area you choose. Um, so these are going to be four or five year professional programs. Uh, Bachelor of Architecture is a five year program. The landscape architecture and interior design options are four year programs. Um, and so what these do is they lead you up to the licensure aspects that you need after graduation. So it's not like when you graduate with a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture degree, you are suddenly a landscape architect. But what it does is it leads you to the next step in the process of becoming licensed in the area. So our programs lead you to the precipice of that. So we do as much as you possibly can while in college. And then when you graduate, you're ready for that next step. Now in comparison, these studies programs are both four-year programs, so none of these, uh, neither of these are five-year. They uh, are programs that are for students really wanting a foundation in a design field that um, don't really want to go on to become licensed in that area. Really what these uh, majors really prepare you for is using design in a related field. So we have students that have used our studies degrees to go on to do um, journalism in the area of design, um, law school, working in uh, nonprofits, urban planning, 
uh, city design, stuff like that, that does actually require you to be licensed in one of those fields, but still benefits from having a design background. So there's multiple different ways um, that the studies program can really fit into your path. Um, as a studies program student, you would work with your faculty advisor and your uh, academic counselor to really build a path that works the most for you. So for instance, if you're going into something like historical preservation, it doesn't make as much sense to take a bunch of writing classes, where if you're interested in journalism in the future, you don't want to take a bunch of history classes, for instance. So it's just making sure that the classes that you're taking fit within our program, but also fit the path that you're wanting to take moving forward. So the easiest way to think of the difference between these two is that the professional degrees are very structured. They are a very specific plan that you're following to go towards licensure. The studies programs are a lot more fluid, they're a lot more individual, and they're focused more on what you want to do in your direct path as opposed to um, leading towards a specific goal. So we've talked about who all is within the Faye Jones School. So let's talk about what it actually looks like to be a Faye Jones student or what is the Faye experience. But a huge component of the uh, design education experience at the U of A is going to be studios, design studios. I'm going to let this video explain it a little bit more in detail first, and then we'll jump into the specifics in just a moment. The studio space is a place where actually you're going to form the greatest friendships that you've ever had. You're going to examine these uh, problems and make things out of chipboard and clay and all these wonderful materials and you have your own space to do it. A lot of schools you have to share a studio desk your first year or first and second year. Some schools you never get a dedicated studio desk. Here at the Faye Jones School from your first day as a freshman to the time you graduate you have your dedicated studio space to use 24-7. Design Studio is a hub uh, for me. It's a hub for creation, conversation, criticism, and collaboration. The studio is uh, students working together with one or more professors to uh, problem solve on a particular design problem. The studio itself is a place where they can come together and actually build, make models, make drawings, and actually explore these ideas through physical making and drawing, and they get to sit down with their faculty members and work at a table and sketch with them, and Design Studio allows that to happen. Class is 100% different than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like other college classes that were like, you know, sit down, write a paper, take a test, study. Studio kind of follows you home and changes your life, really. Design Studio to me is more of like a community in a sense. I've made some of my closest friends in the studio. They see you on your worst days. They see you on your best days. I think there's nothing quite like it. There's no hiding from them. <laughs> you go out to eat together, you party together, you work together. So as you probably got from that, Design Studios are semester long project-based, hands-on classes. They are required for our professional programs every semester for those. Um, it's required for the first year for our study students. And, and if it makes the most sense for you to continue just based on the trajectory you're wanting to take with your studies program, you might do higher level studios, but only the first year is required. As you heard in that video, there's a big focus on the design fundamentals and then building on top of those to become more and more advanced in the field. So it's really a building block style of education. You're kind of given uh, some basic tools and then more advanced and more advanced and more advanced until you have your own design style once you're ready to graduate. In your first year, for example, you might be focusing on things like um, hand rendering or building 3D models using computer software or in person um, by hand. Um, really, the big focus on the first year is learning how to see the world as a designer, which is something that you're not really going to have even tried or practiced coming into the program. So if you're kind of thinking, I don't have, a, I don't have any history with any of that, I don't know what any of that means, totally fine. You're not expected to come into the Bay Jones School already being an expert in you know, 2D art or physics of buildings or anything like that. That's what your faculty is for. Your faculty is there to teach you what you need to know to be a designer. 
So that's studio in a nutshell. It's, it's a big complicated part of the Faye Jones experience, but it's really one of the things that sets our programs apart. So when it comes to design studios, there are also two tracks for this as well. So fall studio means you, know, you would take studio classes beginning basically your first day on campus and then continue it into the spring semester. The summer studio track means that for your first year, you do not take studio classes in fall or spring, and instead you take them all in the summer. So we do have some requirements that you need to hit to be able to get a seat in fall studio. You do have to have a 3.5 high school GPA or higher. You have to have a 25 ACT or the similar SAT score um, or higher to qualify. Those are for all three disciplinary: architecture, landscape architecture, and interior design. And then for architecture only, just because of what's covered, you also have to have a high school physics class, or if you're a transfer student, a physics that you transferred in, and a high level math. Now math is a little bit more fluid in terms of um, what all is covered within that, so your um, advisors are going to be a great place to go to for questions about that, or again, let me know if you're wanting to know what's covered by high level math. And these are the requirements, again, because we have so many students wanting to come in and start immediately on studio. So if you fit these requirements, you can apply to start studio in the fall. What we do is you have to apply and be admitted to the university by November 15th of your senior year of high school. If you apply before then, that's the priority admissions deadline. If you apply and are admitted by then and you hit these qualifications, we send you an invitation letting you know that you can have a spot in studio if you want one. So the perks of getting to do the fall studio track are that you jump into your degree focus right away, kind of day one, but it is more rigorous for your first year. Um, you have to jump into that studio style of class that most students haven't done anything similar to that. And that could be a big transition from high school. And we totally understand that. So you are expected to put in a lot of hours for your design projects. And this is going to expect it kind of from day one. So there are some students who feel like that's a perfect fit for them. They want to make sure that they are in a studio class from the moment they're on campus. Some students aren't comfortable jumping into rigorous class from day one. For some students, summer studio is a better option because to do summer studio, you do not have to have any of those requirements. As long as you're admitted to the university, you can do summer studio. What you'll do leading up to that is do your university core classes. For architecture students, this is a chance to take a physics class if you hadn't had one yet, as well as a higher level math class. Typically, it's going to be plain trig in fall and spring of freshman year. And then in summer, you transition into doing studio then. What's really great about the summer studio is it really gives you more flexibility in your freshman year. So it's really great for students who aren't sure that they're comfortable jumping into a really rigorous set of classes right away, but it also leaves you room for things like Greek life, if that's something that you're interested in pursuing. Athletics, that can be tough to fit in with a studio schedule, so this is a good way to make sure that you can balance both, as well as jobs. So if you have a part-time job or anything like that that you need to balance, summer studio can sometimes be a good way to go. It's also great because it's distraction free. So when you're in the summer studio, you don't have to worry about balancing um, other classes where you might have essays due or math homework or something like that. You are taking only studio class uh, and you are not expected to be doing anything else besides that. A study abroad is required for our professional program students, so we really consider it a part of the Bay Jones school experience as well. Even though it's not required for our studies program students, we really recommend them for them as well. For Bay Jones students in particular, we have three areas that you could use for study abroad. So the University of Arkansas Rome Center um, is, as you could probably guess, in Rome, Italy. It is in a very historic part of Rome, right near the Vatican, in the uh, really prestigious, very beautiful Palazzo Taverna, which is actually the picture in the top left. It's a um, university-owned building that we conduct uh, all different study abroad programs out of, but we have very specific architecture and interior design programs out of them as well. We also have a summer option, so the Mexico Summer Urban Institute, which is an 11-week program based out of Mexico City, but really it travels a lot. So it might be in Mexico City for, for a week of it, and then you're moving around to different parts of the country 
to see different styles in different regions. This is a really cool one because you really get to collaborate closely with practicing uh, designers in the field in Mexico City. Um, really get to dive into Latin American architectural scene from day one. And then we have our field studies. So we've had students go to basically all over the place. I couldn't list them all if I tried. So we've got some typical ones. We've got some students who go to England and we go to France and different places in Scandinavia. Uh, but we have some students that have gone to Japan. We've got students who have gone to really all over the place. So study abroad going to be a huge part of the uh, design experience as a Beijing student. So moving on to some of the more typical resources um, as part of the Faye Jones experience that's a little bit less the flashy side of things, but still really important stuff to know. I really recommend if you want any more info on any of these, this is where the handout comes in really handy because I've got links in the handout that can go to um, more information online if you're having trouble finding anything. We do have over 80 scholarships available each year specifically for our Faye Jones students. So architecture, landscape, architecture, and interior design students only can apply for these. But last year, we awarded over $164,000 just to our students in scholarships. And we are consistently working to build up that um, area and hopefully offer more and more to our students as we continue on. That's always something that we're looking to do to grow. So in terms of student services, you are not expected to jump into the Faye Jones School and then handle everything on your own. You have a good network of people there to help you from day one. Um, you do have an academic counselor in Teresa who is focused specifically on helping you with your first year in the Faye Jones School. She's gonna be there for every question, even if you think, I'm the only one struggling with this. She is there for that. And then when you move forward and get a little bit further along, you've got Sherry Lynn. She can help with any path that you're wanting to take moving forward. She can get you connected to the right people if you have questions outside of the school. Uh, so we've got a really experienced staff on the academic counseling side of things. We do have an honors program in the Faye Jones School. It's a partnership with the campus-wide honors college. The honors program looks great on a resume, but we really want to make sure that it's a benefit to be in while you're in it as well. There should be perks to it, not just once you've graduated, but once you're in it. So we do have scholarships and grants available specifically for honor students. Um, and we also do annual honors only workshops. So when we bring in those high profile designers, that's a chance for you as an honor student to really get to have some face to face time with them. And then lastly, our student organizations, we do have seven specific student organizations for Faye Jones students only. These are going to be um, either based around discipline areas, so we have one each for landscape architecture, architecture and interior design, and these are student chapters of professional organizations. So basically you can be in the student version of it as a college student and then graduate and join the professional organization once you're out in the field and you'll already have a, um, a sense of how these organizations are set up, the important names you need to know, really you're just transitioning into a higher level of it. So we've got, uh, like I said, one for each discipline area, as well as the National Organization of Minority Architectural Students. So these are a great way to get connected to the people around you, get connected with professionals out in the field, but also it's, it's a fun way to utilize your classes and the design work that you're doing in fun programming. The Fagan School is located in Ball Walker Hall. So this is obviously where normally we would go on a building tour and we would see the sites around, get to see students in their element, um, get to see the projects that they're working on, get to meet some faculty maybe, um, get to really envision yourself in the space. At this point, again, we know that that's not maybe a possibility, but that doesn't mean that you can't see the spaces um, and get to know it a little bit before you get here. So this is a little bit of a longer video, but it's a walkthrough of some of the spaces in Vol Walker Hall. The spaces we use for design education are an integral part of the experience of learning how to become a designer. Let's tour the building and see how the spaces of Vol Walker Hall are part of the teaching and learning process at the Faye Jones School. Uh, right now we're in the wood lab, um, also we call it the wood shop, and um, here students make many amazing things. 
We have all the basic traditional tools that you would expect, um, hand tools, power tools. Students who work in here are capable of working with wood, steel, glass, stone, concrete. Uh, the wood shop may be a bit of a misnomer. We have our 3D print lab where we have eight FDM 3D printers. In the laser lab, we have four CO2 lasers for uh, cutting thin sheet goods. We're at the Build Lab. Build Lab is a 7,000 square foot of space in conjunction with our on-campus labs. The Build Lab is really focused on large-scale projects. The lab is focused around more advanced coursework and faculty research. People just like kind of bring their ideas in there and pin up work and it's easy to like critique like with the students and stuff like that. The gallery is a really unique space in the Faye Jones School. Um, throughout the semester, um, students have to put their work up on the wall and get feedback from other students, faculty. From freshman year to the time you graduate, every semester you're going to have experience standing up and presenting your ideas um, to practitioners, to professionals, leaders in the field. I just love the, the, the way it has grandeur of the old, but it clearly has the language of the new. We have a really great auditorium here. It seats about 250 people. It's generally used for our large lecture courses, Design Thinking 1, Design Thinking 2, the Architecture History classes. Um, so it's a large lecture hall. But um, the most exciting thing that happens in that lecture hall is, again, we bring in famous architects, interior designers, landscape architects from all over the world. And usually every other Monday at 5 o'clock, we have a lecture um, from one of these people. The Smith Exhibition Gallery is uh, new in so many ways for the school in that it provides us with a formal exhibition space. One of the great things about the gallery is that it allows us to bring in work from around the world, visiting artists and architects, designers who are showcasing their work. Right now, we're looking at uh, one part at least of an exhibition that was part of an overall competition that we held uh, earlier this spring in February of 2020 to uh, try to identify the best architect in the world, essentially, for the design of what is the proposed Anthony Timberland Center for Design and Materials Innovation. The Anthony Timberland Center is that embodiment of our initiatives in timber and wood. It's also a, a dramatic expansion of our overall fabrication facilities. The Sky Terrace really becomes a place of uh, refuge and prospect uh, with these fantastic views to the south out over the Boston Mountains, but also a place to kind of retreat into. The Sky Terrace is really beneficial for me because, I mean, you get stuck in the studio and you're just always there thinking, I mean, five hours of your studio time just in, in there, you know, trying to think of ideas. And the Sky Terrace, a lot of times, will go up there to, like, take a break from class and start thinking outside of studio and just get a breath of fresh air, honestly. I think the best time to go out on the Sky Terrace is um, either at sunset or out for lunch because it's definitely the best lunch spot. That's a brief tour of the spaces that make the Faye Jones School an exceptional experience. So we've talked about the who, the what, and the where. So we need to really talk about why. Why should you be a Faye Jones student? And we really talked about some of these already. The studio culture is very unique, especially on the University of Arkansas campus, but really um, most college programs are not going to be set around a hands-on, uh, really action-based class from day one of your freshman year. Um, where the Faye Jones School is. So studio makes us really unique. Our study abroad programs make us very unique. Um, and really the resources that we have. You saw some of them in the video just now, but we have top of the line resources, both in the tools that we use and that our students use, 
um, our 3D printers, our CNC machines, anything like that, but also the faculty around you, the staff around you, the people in the building are just as much of a resource as the stuff that you get to use. But we also want to cover some stuff that we haven't jumped into as much so far. But we'll start with the small college aspect of it. So we are the smallest college on the U of A campus. I think I've mentioned this already um, with a 15 to 1 faculty to student ratio. We feel like that's a perk because you get to um, have the environment of being in a smaller group of people while also having the resources that come with being a U of A student, a large school student. Um, so we've got a huge network of alumni and um, people associated with the university that you can benefit from as a student. You get to have a small group of people so it's not overwhelming, it's not a huge group that you have to compete against for attention or for questions or anything like that. Um, and then you get to still have the benefits of being at a bigger school. We also want to really emphasize that you're going to be working on bettering the world around you from day one. So you're using your design education to better yourself and better the world around you at the same time, which is really cool. Um, so you're helping communities kind of locally, um, lots of stuff in the Fayetteville area here, but also tons of stuff outside of Fayetteville as well. So some recent projects are listed down there at the bottom. And then once you graduate, um, we've got some pretty great uh, impacts of students there as well. We consistently have great job placement rates after graduation. Um, our students have great success of finding areas and paths that they want to follow um, once they leave the Faye Jones School. So you can see the numbers here. These are from 2018-2019. About 80 percent of our students in the architecture discipline had jobs lined up after graduation or they were going into continuing education. So a master's degree, PhD, something like that. For interior design, landscape architecture studies and uh, landscape architecture itself, 100 percent. So 100% of the students that we talked to had job placements after graduation. They had stuff lined up and ready to go at the moment they got their diploma. And we really feel like that speaks to the quality of work that our students are producing, the reputation that is associated with the Faye Jones School, and they know the design field before leaving campus. And then in terms of kind of that high quality of work. You can take my word for it, uh, but we do have some other people speaking up on that as well. And I'm not going to go over all of these. I want to highlight two of these in particular. The top one here is our distinguished professor of architecture, Marlon Blackwell. So he was the 2020 SEC Professor of the Year, and that is not architecture professor of the year, but just general professor of the year. And uh, the 2020 American Institute of Architects Gold Medalist. This is the highest honor that an architect can get. It in the long history of this prize, um, there have been, I believe, 74 people who have won the gold medal. Two of them are associated with the Faye Jones School. One of them is Professor Blackwell, and one of them is Faye Jones himself. And then the last one listed here, the Donja Prize, our interior design students have won this prize, which is the most prestigious award in the field of uh, interior design education. They have won this award four times in the last five years. So really across the board, we've got um, super high level faculty and then we, our students are setting themselves up for long careers in the field of design. So hopefully you've heard all of that, that I've gone through all of the um, pieces of the Fay experience. So hopefully you're thinking, when should I start? When do I get to jump into this? Um, I'm not going to go over this super in detail because a lot of this is available in lots of detail on the admissions website. So I did want to point out a couple of things. First one is that if you're still in high school, pursue as much as possible um, a rigorous academic program. Now we know that's not available to everybody. Not all students have the option to do things like AP classes or honors classes if your school doesn't offer them or if it's a limited amount of people who can get in or something like that. We totally get that. You're not going to be set behind if you don't take AP classes in high school, but it can be a good way to make sure that you're ready for the workload of college and transition a little bit easier once you're used to kind of that rigorous program. We also recommend, again, if you can, taking classes that uh, teach skills that you're going to build on as you go. So things like art and drawing classes can 
really build on your visual thinking skills, and then um, upper level math and science if you can. So physics and calculus are really important for architecture. Um, if you remember from the diff two different studio tracks, to do fall studio, you have to have physics and a higher level class, something like calculus, to be able to do the fall studio for architecture. Landscape architecture, these aren't requirements, but these are things that can be really beneficial. Biology and geology are really um, most environmental sciences. None of these are required. If you're an architecture major and you come in and you don't have physics, remember that you have the option of doing physics in your freshman year and doing the summer studio. So you have other options. November 15th is a date you'll hear a lot. November 15th is the priority admissions deadline. It's big across campus. For Faye Jones students in particular, this is important for the fall studio track. So remember that you have to have applied and been admitted by November 15th to have a chance to get into fall studio. A couple of other dates I wanna point out on here, January 1st is when the Faye Jones School Scholarship application opens. That is only available for students who have already um, done the university-wide application. So you can't do just the Faye Jones application for scholarships, you have to do the university one and then do the Faye Jones School one. So, and the deadline for the Faye Jones application is February 15th. So we give you about six weeks to work on that scholarship application before it closes. And that's it. So thank you so much for checking in with us. Hopefully this answered some questions. Please absolutely reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm at rachelf at uark.edu. Um, you can find uh, the Faye Jones School on all the usual social media at Faye Jones School. And actually, I don't have it listed here, but our YouTube as well is the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design. Um, all of the videos that I have in this presentation are pieces of longer videos that are available on our YouTube channel. So if you want to see a little bit more of our building, want to hear about the renovation process, because that's really cool. Um, even really some design basics. If you're wanting to start kind of looking into that and building on that, that's all available on our YouTube channel. So highly recommend that if you get a chance. And then last thing is remember the handout that goes with this presentation. Um, since I don't know who all is going to watch this video, I can't say that once you've watched it, unfortunately, but all you have to do is shoot me an email all it has to say is, I'd like a copy of the presentation handout, and I will send that your way. No questions asked or anything like that. Please feel free to reach out, and I'd be happy to do that. But then, of course, if you have questions that go along with that, happy to answer those. We can set up a time to talk, or we can just chat through email, whatever works best for you. So like I said, I hope this answered your questions. If you need anything else, please contact me and let me know. But otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and hope we get to see you soon. Thanks.